All right, God bless you tonight, my brothers, sisters, and friends. Truly want to thank and praise God for blessing us to come to you once again. We want to thank and praise God for his many divine blessings that he has bestowed upon us. We're coming back tonight asking the question, is Jesus sitting on a separate throne than God the Father? So we're coming back with the conclusion of this subject on tonight. Let's take our Bibles tonight and turn to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12. We hope you have your Bibles and you have turned to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12. This is what it says. It says, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Verse 13. From his forth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. All right, let's go back to verse um, 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever. Now Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice for our sins. He came to put away sin. He came to take away sin. So he offered himself to take away sin from the world. And all who receive him will receive the atonement. And somebody said one time that word atonement is we are at one mint with God. We are at one with God. We are at one with God, the atonement. We are at one with God. All right? So, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice himself for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Now, if he sat down on the right hand of God, then that means he has to be on the same throne as God. He is not on a separate throne. He's on the same throne. In other words, he's on God's throne. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God doesn't have a throne and he has a throne. No. God has a throne and he is sitting on that throne at God's right hand. So he is on the throne of God now. All right. Now, I made a statement last uh, the other night that Jesus is not reigning. Now, when I said Jesus is not reigning, I meant that he is not reigning on David's throne in heaven. I did not mean that Jesus is not reigning because he is reigning. All right? He's reigning over the kingdom of God. He's reigning over us. You see, there is, in this world, the devil's kingdom and God's kingdom. And Jesus has been made both Lord in Christ over the kingdom of God. He is in charge now. Let's take, let's take that word back instead of using in charge. Let's say that Jesus is in control now. The devil is in charge. He's in charge, but Jesus is in control. All right? So Jesus is reigning over the kingdom of the children of God, over us. And of course, the devil is reigning over the world system. He is the God of this world system. So he is in charge. All right? So Jesus is sitting on the throne of God at his right hand. All right, now let's go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, and that, that will sum this part up for us. That will answer the question where Jesus is sitting. So everybody out there that's teaching that Jesus is sitting on David's throne now, we know that they are not rightly dividing the word of truth. Now we have one person we know for sure, a minister who says that Jesus is, on, is, is now reigning on David's throne in heaven. He's sitting on David's throne in heaven. But we know, according to the word of God, that is not correct. All right? That's not correct. 
So he is in error on that. He is wrong on that. Elder Murray is wrong on that Jesus is sitting on a separate throne from God the Father. That is error. That is not correct teaching. All right? Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. See, we can't, we can't fight the word. In other words, we don't have the authority to fight the word. When the word says something, we just believe the word. Hallelujah. All right, Revelation chapter 3, we hope you're there. Verse 21, it says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. This is Jesus talking. He said, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. All right, let's go back to the beginning of verse 21. To him that overcometh, everyone that intends to sit down with Jesus in the New Jerusalem, all right, sit down with Jesus in the uh, millennium, must overcome. You must overcome. And to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Now we see and we know that the church, the church, everybody that's saved, hallelujah, New Jerusalem, are going to sit with Jesus or reign with Jesus in the new millennium. He said, even as I, I also overcame, when did Jesus overcome? Well, he overcome when he defeated death. All right? He overcame when he defeated death. When he died at the cross, rose from the dead, he overcame. All right, and am set down with my father in his throne. So the throne that Jesus is sitting on now is the father's throne. He's not sitting on his throne. His throne is in the future. His throne shall come to pass. His throne is on down the road. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right, now let's take our Bibles and go to uh, Luke 22, verse 28. Let's go to Luke 22, verse 28, as we bring this subject to a close tonight, asking the question, is Jesus sitting on a separate throne in heaven, all right? Or is he sitting on the same throne as God the Father? And we see already that Jesus is sitting on the same throne at the right hand of God the Father. He's sitting on God's throne. He overcame and he is now sitting on the throne of his father God. But one day, he's going to have a throne. Hallelujah. And we shall reign with him on that throne. All right. Now Luke chapter um, 22, verse 28. We hope that you have your Bibles and you have turned to Luke chapter 22, verse 28. All right. Uh, this is what it says. It says, uh, Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptation. Ye or you are they which have continued with me in my temptation. Now you must continue with the Lord Jesus Christ in your temptation. See, they continue with Jesus in his temptation because Jesus uh, they were with Jesus. But today, right now, we must continue with Jesus in our temptations. In other words, we must overcome our temptation. We must not yield to temptations. See, it's not a sin to be tempted, but it's a sin to yield to the temptations. In other words, when the devil presents something to us, 
when he brings something to us and try to get us to get into it, we are not to accept what the what Satan is bringing to us, is presenting to us. We don't want his presence. All right? We are to tell him to get behind me, Satan. I do not want anything that you have to offer. All right? So we are to continue with Jesus in our temptation. So he said, ye are they which have continued with me in my temptation. Verse 29. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father had appointed unto me. Now my father appointed unto me a kingdom and I appoint unto you a kingdom. Hallelujah. And the kingdom that my father appointed unto me is going to be on down the road. It shall come to pass and you shall reign with me in that kingdom. Hallelujah. Look at verse 30. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. See, they're not eating and drinking at Jesus' table in his kingdom. Now, no. That's not happening in heaven. The kingdom that Jesus is going to inherit, we are going to be able to sit down and eat and drink with him at his table, in his kingdom, all right? And sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Glory be to God. That's what we're going to be doing in the New Jerusalem. We're going to be judging tribes. Hallelujah. Now, let's take our Bibles and go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, for the last verse. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Hallelujah. So we see that Jesus is sitting on the throne of his father at his right hand and not on his own throne, the throne of David. Revelation 20, verse 4. We hope you have your Bibles and you have turned to Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, as we close this subject out on tonight. All right. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. This is what it says. It says, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Look at verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So we as children of God will be in the first resurrection. We will reign with Christ a thousand years in his kingdom. All right, in the millennium. Look at verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now let's go back up to verse 4. And I saw thrones. So there are thrones. There are thrones in heaven. But we're talking about God's throne. That throne that Jesus is now sitting on at the right hand of God the Father. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads and in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So we are looking forward to this thousand year reign with the Lord Jesus Christ in his kingdom to sit and dine at his table. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, we thank and praise God for the word of God that we've heard on tonight. And we receive the word of God on tonight. We'll see you on the next video. God bless. Good night.